Good morning, and welcome this morning to the Gunkwit Baptist Church Online. I'm glad you can be here with us as we come together over the internet to give thanks and praise to Almighty God, our Father, Jesus Christ, His Son, through the power of the Holy Spirit. We are praising Him today, giving Him thanks, He who uplifts the humble and freely gives forgiveness and eternal life to all who put their faith in Him. Welcome as we worship him today. There are a couple of announcements to point out to you today. First, uh, Monday, tomorrow, is our annual meeting, and that will be at 7 o'clock on Zoom. Uh, there are Zoom links that went out on my weekly email, and I'll be sending them out again this week in the weekly email, so uh, take a look at that and make sure that you have it. Uh, so that you can join us. Uh, we do have some important things to discuss, so I hope that you will be there with us on Zoom at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. On Wednesday, we are starting our new Bible study on 1 John, and that will be a hybrid study. So you will have an opportunity, if you'd like to, to come and study with us in person. Now, that will be done in the fellowship hall of the church building, and uh, we will, of course, be wearing masks the entire time, and we will be socially distancing uh, in the fellowship hall. Uh, so if you'd like to join us there, you can, but we also will be on Zoom. Uh, so if you'd like to join us on Zoom for that study, you can. And again, the link is in my weekly email, but I will be sending it out again. Then the first Sunday in February, which is February 7th, we will be starting a four-week study for young adults and youth, uh, where we'll be looking at uh, faith and science and whether or not they can go together. And that will be at 6.30 starting the first Sunday of February and going through February. So I hope that you can join us for uh, all of those, one or all of those things, and I look forward to seeing you on Zoom or maybe even in person. Our hymn today is number 224 in your hymnal. If you happen to have one at home, when I survey the wondrous cross, the lyrics will appear on your screen. Let's sing God's praise together.
now, would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, thank you for the love and grace that you give to us when we humbly approach you and put our faith in you. Help us to do that, Lord. Lord, melt our hard hearts and help us to lean on you in all things. For we know that you love us and that you care for us. Thank you for wanting us, Lord. Help us to be humble that we might be exalted by your mighty hand. Father, hear our prayer as we continue as a nation, as individuals, as a nation, and even as a world, Lord, going through this tough time. Father, as this pandemic continues to go on and, and approaches a year since it began, we rely on you, Lord, on your help. Pour out your power, we pray, O great physician, and bring healing to those who are sick. Father, be with those who've lost loved ones. Show them your grace and your strength. Give them your peace, we pray. Father, help us as we continue to roll out this vaccine. Thank you for it. Thank you for the, the doctors and researchers who worked so hard on it. Father, help us to get it out to, to everyone as quickly as possible. Superintend that process, we pray, that, that everyone might be blessed with protection from this illness. Father, hear those who are in trouble financially because of everything that has happened, and be with them and bless them, we pray, O oh, great provider. Father, hear our prayer for our new elected leaders, that you would bless them, Father, with wisdom and guidance, that you would show them the path that you wish for them to walk, Lord, and help them to take each step. Lord, we pray for everyone on our prayer list. You know every need, Father. We ask that you would intercede in every life and bring healing and help and strength as is needed. Lord, thank you for Jesus and for the mercy and grace that you give to us through him. Help us to humbly lean on him that we might have victory even in troubling times. In the name of Christ, we ask all this. Amen. If you'd like to give a gift to the Agunquit Baptist Church, or if you're able to continue with your planned giving during this time, then that would be greatly appreciated. And you can send a check to the church's post office box, P.O. Box 874, Agunquit, Maine, 03907. You also can give through bill pay at your bank, and instructions on how to do that can be found on our website, agunquitbaptistchurch.org. Thank you for supporting our ministry. Scripture reading this morning is Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 to 3. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. 
his disciples came to him, and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We are starting a new preaching series today, looking at the very beginning of Jesus' famous Sermon on the Mount. In the book of Matthew, when Jesus sits down on the hillside and opens his mouth to teach, the first thing he says is a series of short statements that we call the Beatitudes, which means something like the blessings. We're going to start today with the very first beatitude and make our way, one a week, through them all. First, we have to ask, what kind of blessings are these? I mean, if you take a glance through the beatitudes, you might, you might start to ask yourself, what kind of blessings are these? I, blessed are those who mourn? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst? Blessed are those who are persecuted? I'm, I'm not 100% sure that, that I really want all those blessings. In order to understand these eight sayings of Jesus, we probably need to take a quick look at a Greek word. Yeah, after this, you will no longer be able to say, it's all Greek to me. Each of the Beatitudes begins with a particular Greek word, the same word. And uh, by the magic of computer wizardry, here it is. Boom. Did you like that? That was cool, huh? Well, or at least that's a transliteration of it. Makarios is the word. What does it mean? Well, according to Bible scholar D.A. Carson, neither the word happy in English nor the English word blessed really captures this Greek word's full meaning. It is actually a word of, of recommendation or commendation, sort of, you'll be glad someday that you were meek or pure in heart or merciful, or maybe, hey, you ought to try being a peacemaker or poor in spirit, you know, it has benefits that you don't know about right now. Right? Or with some of them, it might be more like, you know, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but, but hungering and thirsting or mourning or being persecuted because you follow Jesus actually can turn out kind of well in the end for you. <laughs> yeah, okay. So in other words, the Beatitudes are blessings that, that maybe don't always seem all that blessed from a human point of view. Blessings that don't seem all that great right now. They don't seem like they're going to get us what we think we want, but that Jesus promises us will be some of the highlights of our lives when we look back on them one day. You know, it's sort of like, I don't know, fully funding your 401k when you are in your 20s, right? I mean, 65 is a long ways away when you are 22 and just out of college. You've got expenses and things you'd like to spend that money on. But blessed are those who start saving for retirement when they are young, right? One day, they'll be very happy that they did. Or maybe kind of like exercising, right? I hate it. Though I will admit, now that I'm being personally trained, I have a personal trainer, by my son who just graduated from with a degree in applied exercise science, uh, he's doing a great job making it a lot more fun than it usually is. But you know, exercise doesn't seem like much fun when you're doing it, at least not to me. But even just a few days later, the rewards become evident. Well, you can't see with the jacket on, but you know, you'll have to take my word for it. Okay, so with all of that in mind then, Let's look at our first beatitude. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, there's a lot we could say about this little saying of Jesus. Let's just stick with this today. Who are the poor in spirit and why do they receive the kingdom of God? Blessed 
are the poor in spirit. Now, do you see what I mean? I mean, who wants to be poor? And, and spirit is good, right? I mean, at least the cheerleaders at my high school back in the day obviously thought so because they would cheer. We've got spirit. Yeah, we've got spirit. Yeah, we've got what? What? All right, I won't do the whole thing. I'll spare you. So is Jesus then saying, blessed are those who don't got spirit? I mean, is Jesus saying that it might be good to be spiritually poor? Spiritually bankrupt? Maybe even spiritually dependent? Back to my retirement savings illustration. Generally, people who are right out of college are not very wealthy, right? I mean, if anything, they're poor. They probably have a negative net worth these days with the high price of college. How about me? When I've let myself go over the holidays, when I haven't worked out and I've gained weight, am I in good shape? No. And the sooner I can admit that to myself and get my personal trainer to work, the better off I am. So here are a few beatitudes then that I have composed myself to go along with those two illustrations. Blessed are those who realize they're not invulnerable. Or how about, blessed are those who know they will get old just like everyone else does. Maybe they'll start saving for their retirement now. Or how about, blessed are those who understand that they will get sick, probably, if they don't stay in good shape. They might have to get their own personal trainer. I know a good one, by the way, if you are you know, looking for one. Blessed are the poor in spirit, Jesus says. Blessed are those who, who realize that they're not rich in spirit, they're, that they're not, they're not self sufficient, that they're not self-righteous. Blessed are those who understand that they're not perfect. Rather, they're flawed human beings. Sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes they do wrong things. Blessed are those who realize that they're not God, but that they need a relationship with God. In other words, Jesus is saying something like, you might not like admitting that you're a sinner, but you will be very glad you did admit it when you receive a place in the kingdom of heaven because you did. So, blessed are the poor in spirit might be, blessed are the humble. I'm sure you're all familiar with the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector from Luke 18 that Jesus tells. They're both in the temple praying, and the Pharisee is right up front with his face lifted to heaven. And he says something like, thank you, God, for making me such a good person. Now, I do all kinds of good things, and I don't do anything wrong, unlike that evil tax collector back there. But the tax collector stood way in the back and didn't even dare to lift his face to heaven. And he beat his breast and he said, God, please have mercy on me. I know I'm a sinner. And Jesus said, I tell you, this man, the tax collector, and not the Pharisee, went home justified before God. Why? Well, Jesus goes on and tells us in Luke 18, he says, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Why do the poor in spirit get the kingdom of heaven? Because getting into the kingdom is all about setting aside our own righteousness, our own good deeds, our own pride. Realizing that we are spiritually destitute and then turning to God in humility to throw ourselves on his grace 
and his mercy. And God has made a way to exalt those who do this. Praise God for his love. That all who call on him in humility, he has made a way to restore them, to exalt them even. To exalt any who will humble themselves and put their faith in Jesus Christ. He sent his son, Jesus, into the world to die on a cross for us. That anyone who humbles themselves and put their faith in him, puts their faith in him, might have all their sins forgiven, be lifted up out of the grave, and made rich in righteousness and eternal life. And given the Holy Spirit, you want to talk about being rich in spirit. Not your own spirit, but the Spirit of God. No one likes to be dependent, but we are dependent. We're dependent on God. We're dependent on God for all things. He made the earth, He created the universe created you and me and gave us life and continues to uphold all things by his powerful word, the Bible says. We are dependent on God for all things. But most importantly, we're dependent on him for mercy and grace, for forgiveness and eternal life, for making up for us what we lack. The poor in spirit are those who rely on God, rely on God for mercy and for grace, rely on him for righteousness rather than trusting in their own. And Jesus says, they are blessed. They are blessed for by throwing themselves on the mercy and grace of God, they become princes, princesses of the kingdom of heaven. So this first beatitude could perhaps be paraphrased like this. You'll be glad if you are humble, realizing that you need God's mercy and grace because God who loves you will give you a place in his kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Savior. So let us humble ourselves before our God, confessing to him our daily need for his mercy and his grace, and say along with that famous hymn, in my hand no price I bring, simply to thy cross I cling. Would you join me in prayer? Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and grace that is so wide and deep. Thank you for Jesus and for making a way for us to be saved, to be made righteous in your sight, for our sins to be forgiven, for a place for us in heaven. Lord, more than that, for exalting us when we humble ourselves before you, adopting us into your family. So many blessings, Lord, you've given. Help us to remember to be humble, to rely on you, to remember that we are poor in spirit, that ours might be the kingdom of heaven. In the name of Christ, we pray this. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for Gunkwit Baptist Church Online. Have a healthy and blessed week.
Just now. 